Hi, this is Ren from Petrol Girls, and you are listening to Rhino Radio. So I have the honor of speaking with Ren of Petrol Girls. Thank you. You seem even more excited than I am. I'm, j- I'm really drunk, <laughs> but it'll be fine. Okay, best interviews are done while drunk. <laughs> I hope so. So I've caught your set, looked amazing, the tent was packed, and you added so much content in between songs. Is that uh, a thing that happens every single time? Yeah, I just sort of feel like while I'm, you know, while I have like a literal platform and a mic, I'm going to use it to like speak about the things that I care about. But I also feel like, um, like the songs can then kind of keep on developing. Like you keep like adding to their meaning if you can then speak about the context and then relate it to, you know, different things in different places, like contextualize it according to like where we're playing. That's something that I try to do quite a lot so like you know I won't talk about the hostile environment for example outside the UK because that's like a specifically a UK policy um, but yeah just <laughs> so we're not going to talk about how the world is a grim place right now but being part of the ongoing and maybe even growing punk scene would you say that punk is needed today in the world more than ever yeah, I think that like I think that punk and other forms of culture are actually really important politically because things like um, like na- like the idea of nations, for example, and the gender binary, like these kind of like oppressive structures are maintained through culture. Like it's like you know the, na- the nation state is maintained through like people's under like sports ceremonies and like um, TV and stuff like this. Therefore, I feel like culture, so forms of culture like music and punk especially, which has like a cult- countercultural like legacy is is a totally important way to like undermine those structures like direct action and politics are obviously all super important as well but like if you really want to change someone's mind and like the like their core ideas and beliefs like i think music's what does it like i really believe that it's what politicized me and i think it's the same for a lot of people so i'm going to use the word expect but you can change it to hope so what do you expect from listeners that um, interact with your music what do you think they what do you hope that they're going to go home and do after they listen to your music or punk in general i hope they feel empowered because i think every single one of us has the power to contribute to making like a massive difference like we're all tiny okay and these like huge things that we're facing like climate change and the rise of the far right they're they're fucking huge those are huge things and they're terrifying but every single one of us is powerful and together together we're really fucking powerful so what i want people to take from that is that we all have a responsibility to challenge these things and we're going to do it better if we do it together so i i just hope like a sense of community a sense of empowerment like and a sense of not being alone in this And when you speak up, do you feel like it sometimes comes with a price? Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, oh, fuck it. I'm literally being sued for speaking up. Like, so, yeah, it it comes with a heavy price. It comes with some serious legal costs, you know what I'm saying? So what helps you continue speaking up, standing up for your beliefs, standing up for people's rights? We have to. What other choice do we have? Like, what, like, literally, what other choice do we have? Like, I'm not going to shut up. Like, I'm not going to, like, there are so many things that are completely fucked in the world right now. What are we meant to do? Just sit and take it? Like, no, I wasn't brought up to do that. Like, no, we're going to fight back and we're going to do it together and we will win eventually. We might not see it in our lifetimes, but like, I'd rather be part of making some sort of change in the long run than just sit on my ass and do nothing and say cynical bullshit to everyone that tries. Fuck that. No, I'm going to try. But I heard, I think in the past, you commented that sometimes you're struggling uh, standing up, whether it's just a hackler from the crowd or something bigger than us. What pushes you forward? How can you... What tips do you give to other people of all genders, of all colors, of all ethnicities to stand up to things that are harming them? Um, I just think that you're more powerful than you think you are, you know? Like, and I think that you would be surprised at, you know, I mean, let's face it, speaking up in various contexts can be dangerous. 
And I don't want to say like, yeah, just speak up, it'll be fine. No, it might be dangerous, you might get hurt. Like, be be safe, you know? Like, take into account what the situation is and what the consequences might be. But like, ultimately, I think if you can find a way of using your own voice, because like, most of us have a voice. It's just a case of like, who is listened to, you know? Like, I think, you know, people often talk about this idea of like, being a voice for the voiceless or some bullshit. But I think it was like Aaron Hattie Roy that said, like, there's no such thing as the voiceless. There's only the deliberately silenced and the preferably unheard. And I just believe that so fucking much. Like, and so many people are silenced, but you know, they can't silence all of us. And like, if we start speaking up, we'll be like a fucking snowball, uh, like rolling down a hill, like gathering speed and forming a fucking avalanche. Like, and Do you believe in the connection, maybe even the tie between change and violence? think that it's needed? Um, so our like whole record before this one was called Talk of Violence and I think what gets called violence is very fucking interesting because like people taking direct action you know like we, like, we smash a shop front window or something like all of these like different um, like uh, tactics that we use get labeled as violent but they're never put in the context of the like excruciatingly violent structures that we fight against you know things like the hostile environment the system of borders like what could be more fucking violent than the amount of people that have died trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea to get into fortress Europe like that is excruciatingly violent and yet it's not framed as such like I think violence is a really interesting word and what we hoped to do with that record was to like open up a conversation about what actually fucking counts as violence because you know what like in this like you know if I fight back against someone that sexually assaults me if I punch them like you know what's more violent me defending myself or the culture of sexual violence that we like all exist in right now I think it's a it's a huge topic and I think that people need to be much more reflective when they think about what counts as violence and what doesn't. And with all that information, and I might come across as a bit sarcastic, but do you think that ignorance is still bliss? I mean, sometimes I sometimes it looks very fucking appealing. I'm not yeah. gonna lie to you. <laughs> like, I'm really tired. Yeah. <laughs> like, as you say, it comes with a price. I'm sometimes really it comes tired. With a price that you pay for yourself. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know what? I struggle with mental health issues. Sometimes I get really, really depressed and things like this. But I actually believe that fighting against the struggle structural sorry I'm quite drunk I believe that fighting against the structural reasons why I end up depressed in the first place you know because we live in a, a, a an alienating culture and I think capitalism is a just like huge like it's damaging to the planet but it's also damaging to people on an individual basis the system that we live under is like so damaging to like every single one of us in different ways like and I think that has massively affected my mental health in, in all sorts of ways but I really, really strongly believe that fighting back, that gives me a sense of empowerment. It gives me a sense of autonomy. And you know, I'm not saying it solves it, but it helps a lot. So I think that there's a lot to be said for standing your ground. And I think I found a tiny ray of sunshine in our weird clouds around us. I feel like Disney is helping young girls find better role models. Would you agree with that? Disney? Yeah, the Disney. new Yeah, the new characters Aladdin. Oh my, oh my god. Aladdin. No, but what's it? Is it Moana? Yeah. The, oh my god, Moana movie. was amazing though, wasn't it? So oh, those new princes Christ. even uh, Mulan is coming back and it looks cool. like some sort of periodical new fight uh, film and the latest Aladdin um, Jasmine got a new kind of very feminist song. I don't know if you watched it. Okay. So oh, what's do you feel the like they're one, not um, the recent evil? Frozen is a banger. Is okay. that Disney? I don't even know. I, I like I think it's in between. All right. I mean, do you like think they're creating new role models for young girls because in the past they were the biggest evil. I mean, I don't think they're flawless. Like yes, of I, I really don't think they're but flawless they're and I think that you could break down like <laughs> so much problematic shit about Disney which I'm not going to try and do now. But the past drunk. ones, the new ones are like, a bit Like it's better. moving in a better direction yes. for sure and I kind of think that like this is what I mean about culture being about being a battleground. Like, well, like stories, like narratives, whether that's like books you read or films you watch, whatever they are. That's how we build our sense of it's ourselves. Mellow way of oppression. Like it, it's it's really important. Like, and I think you know, like all of these feminist kids books that are coming out and stuff like this. Oh, they're they're fucking banging. And like, just the, this way of uh, like. Books and these things, are, like that's how we understand ourselves in the world. Again, culture, 
battleground, ideas, how we perceive ourselves and like our gender roles and like gender, like entirely, like our nationalities, like all of this kind of stuff. Maintain through culture, use culture to challenge it and break it down. Direct action as well, always very necessary, but multiple tactics all the fucking time. Keep going, we're gonna get there. One positive thing about the world right now, what will make us smile tomorrow? Like this school strike movement, like these like young people that have been like, like, you know, Greta Thunberg and these people that are being like, I'm not going to school, you fuck my future. Like, I'm going to get out on the streets and I'm going to fight this shit. They're amazing. Like, I like, I'm going to cry. Like, I think they're like absolutely incredible. Like, they're so powerful. And that gives me so much hope. Like, and we have to stand in solidarity with these amazing young people that are doing absolutely incredible things. Like, like yeah, that's something to smile about, big time. Hey, let's make it a bit more personal. You ladies are going, well, ladies and gentlemen, are going on <laughs> tour uh, September. Yeah, 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 we're out and in September. And we got Cut and Stitch that's already out now. Yes. What else can we get from you in the near future? We'll be touring more, um, like, yeah, we're in the UK in September. Got new music video plans in the pipeline. Um, yeah, no all sorts of stuff. No, no more werewolves. Okay. <laughs> that was a one-off. That scared me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> okay, anything else you want to say, uh, say to fans and listeners out there? Oh, uh, I'm so much. Like, there's, there's, there's too many things, but I think just like, like, where's the camera? Here it is. Be <laughs> Believe in yourself because you are really, really powerful and you can be part of making the change that you want to see. Okay, Ren, Petro Girls, thank you very much. Thank you.